Berlin's rent cap is a year old, so has it worked? Megan and Conrad apply their usual laser-like statistical analysis to the property market data, forensically dissecting the complex legal situation. Meanwhile, a Nazi concentration camp guard has been flown from the US to Germany, but is not going to be prosecuted, and Conrad drinks a Johnny Walker for Maine and a Jack Daniels for afters. It's Das News. Hello, everybody. It's time for another episode of Megan's Megacan. I'm Megan. I'm here in glorious partnership with Ex Berliner magazine and Conrad Werner. <laughs> Oh, you really fucked that one up. <laughs> I thought you were going to... You looked at me like you were going to say hello. No, I was looking at you And then you didn't you say like hello. Or how are you? You're sp- oh, you God. Look, uh, we were getting so good like, at that. Anyway, You Conrad. started to move your mouth, and I thought, oh, she, she's about to say how are you or hello. And then I thought... Then I didn't say anything. And I was waiting for you. Oh. Well, we've started well. We've, we've started, started well. beautifully there. How are you? Fine. Good. Are you drinking yet? No. No. Which means I've brought two mega cans. <laughs> oh, no. Um, because, and I quote you, when I asked you yesterday, do you want to drink two mega cans? You said, I'll see how I get on. Hmm. And if popular demand has any sway, many, many people enjoyed listening to you drink two mega cans <laughs> last week. Many, I got many. at least two, like, personal messages to me, and then there were a few on the page on Facebook <laughs> as well, I think. And maybe on Twitter too. Oh. Well, so, I'll see how I go. There we go. That's the spirit. I'll see if I, I'll manage one and then we'll we'll, yeah. we'll improvise through the other. Yeah, that's that's usually how drinking goes, I think. Before uh, we start, we also have to say a massive thank you to our listener, Hannah Susan, who yes. is sponsoring us. That's so kind. She sent us a little bit of money. So it's quite Real lot of, money. Like, actual money. Yeah. She's going to be sponsoring the next few mega cans, I think. Yeah. It's very kind of you, Hannah. Thank you so much. I, I know. That was amazing. I mean, like, I can't believe it. People sending us real money. I think it's insane. <laughs> like, not like, only, like, genuinely <laughs> very, very, very touching. Um, And I think we've had quite a lot of, like, listener interaction over the last few weeks maybe everyone's just bored absolutely shitless in <laughs> like, i don't know trying they're gonna intervene <laughs> like <laughs> merkel's gonna lift the restrictions and we'll have like five <laughs> listeners <laughs> um so thanks very much hannah yeah thank you so much hannah and thank you to everyone who's been like contacting us and talking to us you don't have to send us money but it's also well, very f- nice when you <laughs> do feel free <laughs> please yeah so speaking of money buying booze i brought you two ones which i think you've liked because i think if you're you know going to drink two there should be nice ones one is johnny and ginger okay which is very fancy did i tell you about the red one there's johnny walker red label in omega but you don't get it often Uh i tried to buy you it once and then i ended up somehow taking it on the session in my handbag (laughs) and we drank it (laughs) <laughs> before I could get thought that you. counts or a Lynchburg lemonade from Jack Daniels which is also a good one okay so now I just have to choose which to drink first yes in a slight so difference ginger. to our usual programming okay well I guess oh, also yeah. I haven't cleaned the top of those mega cans I'm sorry I forgot I think that Johnny Walker is more of a savoury whiskey so I'll yeah, start with that and then have and dessert the, the, the other one the, good good the Jack Daniels I'm is having the dessert. a non-alcoholic beer which right. is exciting but as I discovered last time I did this I kind of have like a Pavlovian response to this environment so I feel pissed after 20 <laughs> minutes anyway so cheers cheers Let's see how I go mm-hmm. okay okay first things first well we've done the first things first yeah. next things second next um, things next last friday was the first anniversary of mm-hmm. the attack in hanau yeah in which several people were killed by a yeah. racist murderer yeah nine people were shot and killed and several others injured in hanau where is hanau exactly oh, it's near frankfurt yeah, I thought it was in Hessen, and I think it's just sort of important to mark that, which um a lot of people did, and we were sort of talking before we started recording about some journalists were tweeting that although Hannah was obviously like a completely horrific disaster that should never have happened, it did mean that this week one sort of thing that he was he was saying is that 
um, a lot of the major newspapers were running it as like a lead story and talking about racism and anti-racism and all of that stuff, which we desperately need to be talking about. Yeah, I mean, it was huge. There was loads of media attention on it all weekend. And there was a massive demo in Berlin on Saturday evening early evening and it was only the demo was registered for only a few hundred i think about six or seven hundred and thousands of people came there was a minute silence on Hermann Platz. it was a very beautiful moment i think yeah. yes it's important to mark these things and i'm glad that the demo got to take place because i think it was the demo that was cancelled last year very controversially well they had it yeah the, the that was gonna, of... in in hanau there was going to yeah. be a a commemoration and it was cancelled because of corona and then we went on to let all the corona deniers parade through our streets with wild abandon and, and attempt to storm the reichstag what a year okay um is uh, the, probably when i put this podcast up i'm talking about today it will also be one year of the berlin mm. rent cap the rent freeze as it's known i know i now realize that this is going to be you talking about complicated legal things and i wish that i'd we'd done it differently so you'd be doing this one and a half megas deep but continue okay <laughs> <laughs> i think i can manage for now the point is <laughs> so <laughs> okay <laughs> I, right johnny and ginger has hit hard it's interesting because we had joel dulroy on uh, when it started like about a year ago we did who we tried to get drunk and make not terribly eloquent and totally failed yeah. and he showed us up yeah so we he he kind of explained what it is all about in a set in essence and he said that it is it was a kind of a very drastic and unique experiment of all the types of because there are different types of rent controls you mm -hmm. can bring in but this was like a rent freeze a kind of direct intervention in how much a landlord is allowed to charge mm -hmm. and it was that they, they, you had to lower the rents if your rent was higher you had to lower the rent to june 2019 levels mm -hmm. by last november and mm -hmm. any new contracts also had to be june to june 2019 levels and that's kind of a big thing like a lot what germany has anyway is the meat price bremse mm -hmm. the break which is like Got you could... shit names for this. They don't have rent freeze. They have rent lid. And it is more of a freeze, break. but they call it a lid. Exactly. Just call it a freeze. It sounds so much more sexy. But I don't know what you'd say in German. Anyway, this this is a minor a minor side <laughs> side note. Continue. So, and everyone is very keenly trying to figure out what are the what is the upshot of the rent freeze. Has it been effective? You know. Has it actually led to lower rents? What has it done to the rental market mm. after a year? Is it still an absolute disaster trying to find a flat? Well, the upshot is basically if you already have a flat, then it's actually better. Like yeah. a lot of people have had their rents lowered. Mm -hmm. And on average, rents across Berlin have gone down by 7.8%. Good stuff. Which is quite a lot mm -hmm. considering that they've been going up for years and years and years. They've been going up by like 10% a year in some cases. Yeah. So on average... They've, they have actually gone down and a lot of people are sticking, a lot of landlords are sticking to the rules. A lot of uh, some aren't as well. But the downside is that apparently the number of new apartments on the market has also gone down by about 30 percent oh jesus and the number of people answering ads you know like when there's this is this is all according to imo scout 24 yeah. they did a survey well, of one year meet and deckel and they said that instead of 128 answers per advert across berlin it's now gone up to well over 200 like 215 or oh something. my god for every single apartment that's on the market. That's quite a lot. So do they speculate as to why this is? Well, I I don't know. I think... Would you like to speculate, Conrad? <laughs> I did I, I did talk to someone from the Mieterverein today. Oh. And she said that it could be to do with coronavirus. It could be nothing to do with the meat and deckle. It could be okay. that people are not... People aren't moving as much. That's true. Because there's no... You know, and also it could be people aren't moving as much because of the meat and deco, like they've got a place to stay and it's not too expensive for them to live in anymore mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the rent hasn't been raised on them. So there's, they've got a reason to stay. Okay. And th there's also some speculation that landlords are not putting 
new flats on the market are not don't they don't feel like it's worth it for them so they're like renting it to f- friends and family like you know they're just renting out you know just subletting or doing something else they're okay. not, not putting it out on the public market or they're leaving them empty which is illegal in, in berlin anyway like this is what i don't quite understand i get that seven percent you know if your rent has gone down so much the amount of rent you're taking in but can it really be so much that it's just not worth it how much were you charging that's a good question the point is that these figures will give both sides of the argument Mm -hmm. like a a justification the the, you know the people the people who kind of want the rent control to be controlled the rents to be controlled better will say look the, the rents have gone down and and people are sticking to it and people are following the rules and now people can afford to live in Berlin Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. can afford slightly better to live in Berlin. Whereas on the other side of the argument, the investors or the uh, landlords associations and all these people are saying, look, this goes to show that the rent cap doesn't work because now there's nothing on the market and it's now it's a total nightmare to find a place to live. Yeah, well, you need to tell me why that is, mate. Because if it's just you going, we don't like the rent cap, so we're withholding Wohnungen so that we can say, oh, look, there's so many fewer apartments on the market. Yeah. That also doesn't work. That's nonsense. <laughs> the other thing is that uh, this this survey concluded was that the legal confusion is paralyzing everyone. Yes, because a lot of what I've been hearing is like, okay, but don't spend that keep the full amount your rent has been reduced you know if it's been reduced by a lot you should keep a little at the side because when this goes to the i think it's the height like i don't know which court it's the constitutional court sorry the constitutional court the verfassungsgericht then it might be overthrown and then you'll have to pay it back and everyone's very scared yeah and people are signing two contracts on new flats from what i've heard they've been given two prices like this is the one you'll pay now and if the yeah, they're called shadow rents. <laughs> like they're spooky rents that are like floating, just just uh, casting a shadow over your contract exactly. and over your mind. Which just seems Feeding nuts. uncertainty like, into your brain. Just... A shadow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and that has become normal. And a lot of the uh, landlords associations actually advise landlords to put this in the contract with the shadow rent thing. And that has created a lot of legal uncertainty. And also people are now paying only paying rent provisionally. So some people are putting, um, they're like writing, if they're paying the normal rent and then they're writing in, oh, I have only, I, I sort of, I'm sort of promising, but I'm, I'm only paying this provisionally and I might ask for some of it back. So it's like, there's just all this confusion. The Constitutional Court is due to give a verdict before the end of June. They said, they're kind of being a bit vague about it, but they said, we'll do it in the second quarter of the year. And um, This is just insanity. And the fact that it has been all this kind of slightly confusing has made that the politicians in Berlin are getting a bit cold feet about it, about the whole experiment and might not extend it because there's this question about whether whether or not they should extend it after because it's running out in five years time anyway. And also... God, we got to like... It's not done anything. Door halting a little bit. It's only been one year and nothing actually happened until November, really. No, but exactly. Yeah, nothing's actually happened This is just like, I want to know... And we also have had corona, so we can't go on any of these figures. So, no. Yeah. Obviously, I'm very pro-rent control. I think you brought up the thing, like, why do people just endlessly get to profit off other people's need to live somewhere? Rents have become so much more expensive. I don't have a problem with someone making a living on that. But if we're doing what we seem to do in late stage capitalism, where we equate making a living with constantly increasing profits, yeah, then no, those two things are not the same. Well, I think that's the, the whole point is that it's now, it, it, it's not actually worth your while. If you want to get rich, the last thing you want to do is find a job and work. If you want to get rich, you get a lot of money and then invest it in something that will be more expensive in the future, like property. Oh, so that's why people are now looking at their like investment projections and going, oh, this isn't as massively profitable because I thought I was going to be able to jack up these rents the whole time. And now I can't because people have human right to a flat. Yeah, I mean, that's how I understand late stage capitalism. What people call it. Right, well, we're against it. Here at Megan's (laughs) Megacan, if we haven't made that clear before, you can take late stage capitalism and shove it. I just think, yeah, because it's becoming more and more obvious that just having a job doesn't mean 
you'll be able to earn a living. Yeah, how about we make that more profitable? And not and not just Maybe owning Maybe everyone gets to earn enough money to survive and have a nice holiday when they're not illegal. And not some people get to struggle their whole lives. And then I'm just, I I am aware that I'm just describing socialism and everyone understands <laughs> that. We know, we know what the fucking problem is. And I think we've now, as always, taken a new news story and just been like, well, there we go. But, but you'll be, if you are... Uh, on the other side of the argument, and you do believe in late stage capitalism, you will be glad to hear that the rent cap has done nothing to dampen investors' enthusiasm in Berlin, because the rental, the prices for a property and the prices for buying apartments has continued to go up. Renting, renting apartments has gone down, but buying apartments has gone up because it's okay. still extremely profitable to invest in property in Berlin. Partly That's bad. Be- That's what we don't want. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that is so. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I forgot what I was going to say. Then you interrupted me. I was going to say. I something. didn't say anything. I might have made a face <laughs> and a sound, but I didn't okay. physically interrupt you with words. Sorry. All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, they basically car. That's what I was going to say because there was this uh, Heimstad and this uh, Norwegian billionaire's company. There was a big deal. Like he, he. We've already got the Swedish one, Achilles. No more. We're done. We're full. Yeah. Scandinavian billionaires owning people's houses in Germany. <laughs> and uh, they bought, despite the rent cap, they bought something like 100,000 flats in Berlin. When was this? What a while ago. A few months okay. ago. All the right. point is that everyone is... They're, they, the point is they're speculating on the fact that it'll be easy. Like this, this, this rent cap, one way or another, this rent cap is going to go. Either the constitutional court will tip it over. Or in four years' time, we'll just succumb. Yeah. To late stage, which will really be in its last dying gasps by then. Right. So. Well, I would like to say no. Hang on. I just Googled the facts that I just said. (laughs) Uh, I just said, I just said some facts and they were all wrong. (laughs) Right. What was right was that it was a Norwegian billionaire. Yes. (laughs) What was wrong was 100,000 flats. That's just insane. It was more like (laughs) 4,000. But it was a lot. That is a lot of flats still. 3,000. I love it when you drink and I'm sober because <laughs> it completely upends how this works, which is usually I say something insane and you go, it can't be 100,000 flats. Come on, now, Megan. And I'm just like, 100,000, these bastards. I hate them. <laughs> there's only like, there's only about one and a half million in the whole of Berlin. I was going to say, that's like yeah. every 10th person's <laughs> yeah. like flat. Is well, he is rich. I mean, he's a billionaire. He's like rich. I know, so but it's just maybe I can't not even that imagine. many flats for sale <laughs> in one go. So like, who this company, <laughs> it's owned by a Norwegian but it is a Swedish company and called Heimstaden, and they bought three thousand nine hundred and two apartments and three hundred and and two hundred and eight commercial units last year. So they are obviously not worried at all about this rent cap business, and a lot of people are quite upset about that whole issue as well because um, people who live in those buildings that have been bought are very worried about that their yeah. rents are going to be put up, and there's a lot of like, campaigns it's going on. Like really horrible it is really 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 difficult to be okay if you feel like you're in a precarious living situation um i have a an elderly late neighbor she's actually not that elderly she's like pretty fit and stuff but she's 77 and she's been in our building for like 40 years Mm. and she gets so many letters through the post in the like thing either from our buildings owned by achilles telling us that they're transferring it to some sub group some other business or whatever blah 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 or from then the people who are campaigning to stop Achilles which is very good but they also put like a load of like legalese documents through the letterbox and she just came to my door the other day and was like do you know what's going on I can't sleep anymore because I'm so worried about these letters I don't know if I'm supposed to do something and that stressful isn't it it's, it's just horrible really and like that is the human cost of this wild speculation where we all go and invest in by all means buy a second flat and rent it out but you don't need a hundred thousand <laughs> <laughs> or even four thousand it's too fucking many when do we have the referendum on whether we should it won't be like legally binding or anything but whether we should like deprivatize these big things are we gonna have a referendum yeah 
Right, I think so. Yeah, the, the, a folk um, stabstimmung, like just where they canvas our opinion. Places that own more than I think it's three thousand flat. I think it's coming this year. You're you're talking about Deutsche Wohnen enteignen. Yes, but I think it's not just specific to them. I've no idea. I don't know exactly either. Well, I didn't know you were going to ask me about that, and then I would have looked it up before. But I guess there is there is a campaign, and it has been pretty successful. And at some point, there will have to be some kind of I referendum. I think it's this year. It's another one of the things that we get to vote on this year, which is very exciting. Yeah. But anyway, that wasn't what you said that you were going to talk about when I wrote the list. And now I'm just like <laughs> throwing loads of mega cans and extra <laughs> questions at you. And it's not fair. So what's next on your list? Schools. Oh, yeah. Yay. So as everybody, unless you are living under some kind of rock or literally do not consume any German media at all, which is also a reasonable state to be in, schools could reopen in most states today, I think, but only partially. So and only the primary schools, right? Well, no. no. Yes and no. The focus has been on the youngest kids, so grades one to three and kindergartens to a certain extent, uh, depending on what the parents do. Grades one to three can go in, but they need to be done like in like hybrid. So it's only half the class goes in and the other class, half of the class is still at home to obviously minimize okay. contact. And then the other grades which are affected are the exam classes. So classes that have big exams coming up, which is certainly in Berlin. And I think in most places like the 10th grade. And then depending on your type of school, if you go to 12th grade, then it's 12th grade. If you go to 13th grade like us, it's 13th grade. But schools were allowed with their students in the case of the kids who are like over 18, but also the parent council got to decide what they wanted to do in that case. So they don't have to bring everybody in. And also if you're a parent, you don't have to send your child to school, do you? Yes, there's no Präsenzpflicht at the moment. You do not have to like the... The authorities are not going to come for you if you do not send your kid to school. So yeah. what happened today? What did you do today? Well, I was just in for an exam today. But in our primary school, grades one, two and three or half of them were in. My colleague was saying like, they're super stoked. He's Australian. That's why he said that. <laughs> uh, to be in, which is like super cute. Like they haven't like grades one to three are just they're so small. They're so adorable. And they were just very excited to be in school. Yeah. Which is good because it's, they're really struggling young people at the moment. I think I'm definitely noticing the the cracks are really with some of them starting to show. Really? Yeah. You, when you teach online? And stuff. Yeah. Just sort of in general communications I'm having with them and things that I'm hearing and whatever. So it is tough, but it's also, you know, like all the other things we've been talking about. Coronavirus has not gone away. <laughs> No, apparently not. Apparently not. It's still and, here. And now we're already talking about the third wave starting in Germany. Fuck. Oh, well, because are we? Are I'm we sorry. Like, at what point do we? Are we out of the second wave now? Because the numbers are down. Well, the numbers have gone down. Although they went up slightly at the weekend, mm. but they've they were going down. And now, because of the what's called the UK variant, or the um, English mutant, <laughs> the English which mutant, which is my per term, preferred term, <laughs> the, the English mutant has invaded us, <laughs> and um, uh, the city of Flensburg in Schleswig-Holstein has done oh, a, those lovely beers. Yeah, the they ones you pop. Yeah, they have um, done a curfew. They've actually done an hour oh. uh, curfew in the evenings, a, a bit like in certain places in I France. I know the pod, like Merkel must just be looking at the weather forecast and being like, "Fuck, <laughs> fuck's sake, <laughs> eighteen degrees on Wednesday. This is going to be a disaster." And they are. Everyone's sitting around in the parks, boozing. Yeah, unlike uh, us, well, me just boozing inside. Well, chatting. Yeah, this is actually okay. Yeah, but so schools are kind of opening. For some classes, I guess we'll see how that goes. It's nice for some kids and parents, I guess. Like, I guess sometimes we can just take a little bit of joy in thinking about, like, seven-year-olds seeing their pals today for the first time in a long time. Like, that's kind of cute, isn't it? Um, yeah. And primary school staff and kindergarten staff may well be moving up the list for vaccinations. Oh, yeah. The, the health ministers had a health minister conference today. They did. With Got Spahn. all together. But there was Krach um Spahn's plan. 
Krach um Spahns Plan. Krach um Spahn. That's a lot of, that's a lot of German syllables. What's Krach um so, Spahns Plan? <laughs> so, so, Jens Spahn, who is the... Are you on to your second mega? I'm just about to open Good it. lad. Please uh, talk to me about Health Minister Jens Spahn. <laughs> he is... Um, he they had a cabinet meeting today earlier yes. and he wanted to introduce a few measures including free schnell tests free quick tests of coronavirus which uh funnily enough was a socialist left party idea last year which was oh, like yes. soon shot down by the the right well the union but has any, been anyway the teachers union have been saying maybe we could bring students in in small groups since last year <laughs> so so yeah so he wanted to bring in uh, f- uh free schnell tests but mm-hmm. then merkel um asked him a few questions that you can imagine you can imagine a cabinet meeting it's terrifying i cannot imagine anything more terrifying <laughs> than merkel <laughs> asking me questions of, uh, in a cabinet meeting i would be i'd pee my pants yeah and uh, apparently jens Spahn came up short and was unable to answer f- a few of her questions her questions and also questions ominously from Finance Minister Olaf Scholz. And Who's then, gonna pay for this? Yancy my boy. That was and basically he was like, the question. Ah <laughs> Whip round crowdfunding. <laughs> we'll do a we'll do a, a GoFundMe. Yeah, page. I will say though that And so they didn't do that. That schools are being delivered of Schnell tests. We got one thousand one hundred for about eighty staff. Oh yeah. I thought we were gonna be testing the kids. So I sort of thought that I might, I'm going to get trained. This so is you volunteered next... for cr- training. I volunteered for training because I think it's kind of a weird skill to learn. And also, even though I don't have any medical training, I like to think I'd be able to put people at ease. But weirdly, I'm now even discovered a... I'm going to mainly be testing my colleagues, which for some reason is freaking me out even more. But anyway, Why? that's what I'll be up to. it's just sort of weirdly intimate? No, I think it's more like... I don't know. It's, it's. I don't know why that's weird. It sounds awful. Like I think I could get away with hurting children, but I don't, <laughs> no, that's not it. It's more like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right. Um. Anyway, right. so we've got those. Yeah. I got Chanel tested in school today um, by my head. That was exciting. It is like a pregnancy test. So I hmm. popped my head back into her office and was like, "Baby, kind baby." And she was like, kind baby. So right. I do not have corona. I did not come here with coronavirus. Um, also managed to say to my boss the phrase, oh, don't worry. It takes a lot to make me gag. So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that is a professional thing that I did today in front of the business business head of our school <laughs> and our school secretary yes ladies and gentlemen and Good. everybody else that's what i did I, anyway I, yeah I, so that's everyone Chanel just test. passed over that moment that's fun with Chanel there, there was no awkward silence <laughs> they just laughed at me yeah. which is good Right. So, um, yeah. And then, then now there's also talk about me because remember we, we were talking about the priority list for mm-hmm, vaccinations mm-hmm. And now Jens Spahn is talking about moving teachers higher up the priority list. Yeah. So you are obviously in the eyes of German society more important than previously thought. That's good. Or certainly at like kindergarten staff and, <laughs> and Grundschullehrer in an R. Right. All secondary school teachers. We okay. can just, I don't know what we're going to do. Well, I think it's we'll good. See. I think you should be vaccinated earlier. I think so, but then you look at that list, as I've said on here before, and you're like, dear God, give everybody on this list one now, right now. Like, I don't like playing the whole list game. I just think it's horrible. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Well, yeah. anyway. Um, Thought, thoughts on your megas? Brilliant. Great, <laughs> yeah. Would you like to talk about something else? That's everything that's on my list, which is why I just started talking by megas, which is what always happens. Well, I mean, we've kind of finished, but I could also do the Nazi story, if you'd like. Oh, go on then. Loved far be it from us to have an episode without Nazis. <laughs> so, I think it's quite an interesting uh, case, this. Because you know that the, we, uh, the Germany has been prosecuting 
of former concentration camp guards belatedly starting yes. in 2011 they only started in 2011 well, there, I didn't was know a, that. there was a huge precedent in 2011 that changed the game basically okay and um and the precedent was that from from now on even if you worked at a concentration camp um where people were killed in any capacity at all you could be prosecuted for accessory to murder by Hilford and Mod. And um, so since then, there have been a handful of cases whenever they found a, a still living concentration camp guard from Auschwitz or from Stutthof or from um, Theresienstadt, one of the concentration camps where people were gassed. Stutthof? Yeah, it's, the, it's in north of Poland. It's a different one. Anyway. There's, <laughs> the, Sorry, I just, I, maybe I know it under a different... Um, so yes so they've been doing that anyway but yeah because there, so there has to be the point is there has to be this accessory to murder uh thing because that's the only that's the only crime in the german criminal code that anyone can be prosecuted under for a holocaust crime at this stage because murder is the only um crime that does not have a statute of limitations uh, okay okay and um in this case but so but in America, they have a whole different uh, different set of priorities, legal priorities. And whenever the, the American authorities find a former concentration camp guard, they can do what they can, like, um, they I'm have this... I'm just picturing, like, Inglorious Bastard style thing. They carve a... Carve a a swastika well, into his people form. like out no. hunting for okay yeah and um in the last three years there have been two cases where they've just deported anyone who worked in any concentration camp back to germany and that this is predicated on germany has to accept them you can't just deport someone without the yeah. other country accepting them and in these and these two cases one of them happened this weekend and one of them happened three years ago yeah um both cases were guards who had been living in america who but they hadn't uh, uh, but they weren't working in one of these what they call death camps mm -hmm. where there were gas chambers they were just working in normal like work camps and they can't be prosecuted so there's no in germany they there's no there's no law that they can be prosecuted under so they okay. um so there's no arrest warrant out on these people and but they get sent here anyway and they just sort of live out their their days in a in a nursing home because they're already all over 90 and um this one was called friedrich karl berger who was deported on saturday back to germany he was, he was living in tennessee a german and um the the state prosecutors in germany had opened an investigation into him and closed it again because they had no evidence that he'd participated in any particular murder and um, he's probably just going to like live out his days in a, a German nursing home paid for by the German state. But there's no, um, it's it's all kind of, uh, it's just a weird, like it's a weird like a limbo of, zone. A lot of, a lot of feelings about this. It's not like my point it came from. I can't remember the name of like some amazing documentary about like, um, the Holocaust and basically the fact that we are still obsessed with sort of hunting and punishing Nazis, like from that era, the fact that we have deported, and I'm not excusing like that at, at, at all, but this is a 95 year old in the middle of a global pandemic who there are no criminal charges. There haven't been any criminal charges brought against him. Well, they can't. They, 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 yeah, they, like, they, he's... I, whatever his personal conduct was, to be honest, at this stage, surely that is between him and whatever maker he believes is, like... And, and this obsession is in and of itself not problematic. Like, if you want to go and that is your life's work and, and I don't... I was not personally affected by the Holocaust, so I really can't make a call on that. However, I do think from certain quarters like this 
allows us to not distract ourselves but to I don't know we just love going after Nazis from like the 1940s just from the 1940s because that is very cut and dry well we do now but we didn't in the 50s that was the no, that was that's because the they were all still around and that's what I think about all this is is this is the the justice system in Germany but also around the world is catching up with what it should have been doing in the 50s and 60s yeah and, and rather than still doing that do. we should be like and, and looking now and being like okay where are we fucking up now and we fucking know where it is because we've had all of these like trials of actual nazis now in which there were huge criticisms made of the police of the investigations of the prosecution and we're not fucking dealing with that because we're fucking shipping 95 year olds from tennessee who may or may not have done a few shifts at a concentration camp which is bad i'm not saying that's not bad Ugh. haunts you i don't think we're doing this out of guilt i do do you okay well that's maybe a different that's interesting i think we're doing it out of like, guilt of things we should have done mm. we, we should have done a long time ago yeah I'm not sure. I think it's I fair enough, but there are better channels for our guilt to be exercised. Like there, there's there's better things that we can do with that if we really want to yeah. stop. I mean, this kind I think of shit happening again, yeah. which we have palpably failed to do, and someone needs to show me. The can I tell you about the other case? The other case that happened three years ago was even more complicated because the guy that they deported to German Germany wasn't even German. He was a Polish citizen. I think we talked about this. Yeah, he was called Jakiv Palisz. Yeah. And um, he his deportation, even though it's, it's not... I keep saying the word deportation, but it's not legally a deportation because there's no arrest warrant. It's a basic... The base, what happens is America decides they will no longer harbour him. Okay. And... Germany volunteers to take him in but that's the that's 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 the legal status there's no there's no like because there's no arrest warrant in Germany it's not mm -hmm. technically a deportation and um this Polish this Polish guy he was a what they call a travniki which was a, a Polish collaborator or Ukrainian collaborator mm -hmm. and uh he um who stood guard in a concentration camp but again not a death camp and that means that he was also not prosecuted in Germany, mm -hmm. and um, he was sent over here. But it took it took decades for to deport him. So it took decades yeah. to send him over. And I don't know. Maybe it is important that all of the all of this is done, and that we do all of this work to try and make if not amends, then some kind of closure for as many people and on as wide a scale as possible. Yeah. I mean, the, the reason why it's being done is because the Justice Department in America has this principle that they don't harbour any human rights abusers. That's the, <laughs> that's the, they, no foreign human rights abusers. So no it used far, to be, right, okay. Just, so, the, just the foreign ones. I mean, I don't know if you, it still happens, but when you used to be on a plane going to America, you used to have to fill in a form yeah and yeah. like wait and you have to you have to tick a yeah box you have saying, to tick all these boxes being like i'm not a communist and i'm not a nazi yeah were you a member of the national socialist party between yeah. these years or of did life? you take part in any um uh like atrocities in any world war um and you're supposed to tick these boxes and if you if you found out in which obviously in this case that they lied which then is the, again they have to send you back again i am not arguing against the intention behind these stances you cannot divorce like we were sort of saying with the neutrality law and like the headscarf you can't divorce things from like what they're actually achieving and if and if not like it, it's not sort of actively sort of discriminating people but like is this for all of the resources that are tied up with this is this the best use of our time particularly when it allows us to sort of think that we're somehow fighting Nazism when we are obviously, particularly in Germany, and I know this is kind of different coming from the the US, but if we're still in Germany prosecuting since 2011 with that precedent, if that allows us to tell ourselves that we're fighting Nazism when we're not, where it counts. Yeah, but it's like, you know, two wrongs don't make a right, don't they? 
I mean, you can do it. You should do. You can still do it. It's not, yes. I mean, you know. I don't, then I also, but that's like my own personal thing. Like, I, I, I don't know what good uprooting a ninety-five-year-old does. I, I really don't. But it's that's like just a deeply sad and awful fact of being human. Um. Yeah, that went on a bit longer than I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna sum that up in five minutes. Well. It took about We'd... 13 minutes. Well, that's that's good. I mean, you had to make way for like at least three rants of mine. I, sh- so. I could um I You could always say... need to factor that in, remember, that you're constantly going to be opposed, distracted, <laughs> <laughs> led down the garden path. You brought me cookies as well. and I, I did bring you cookies. cookies. That was very nice. <laughs> Lie in your stomach. Yeah. Uh, good. I think that'll do for today. I think that'll probably do. I can't think of any other news, at least not... not you know, well, not we've covered news. late stage capitalism, coronavirus and Nazis. So yeah. If we haven't all got the details, we've at least got the headlines. <laughs> we've, the uh, we've, we, no one can accuse us of not <laughs> keeping the bigger picture in mind. It's always... That is... <laughs> yeah. God, isn't that... God, that's depressing. At least we're distracted from climate change. <laughs> momentarily because yeah we haven't talked about that for ages yeah it's because we've forgotten that airplanes are a thing yeah and the kids are forced to stay home from school at the moment so we're not noticing it they're not in on fridays oh yeah (laughs) are they still striking Greta is she's still doing it like online and i think they're doing a few online things well more power to those people all right thank you very much for everybody for listening I'm going to be drinking again next time you hear me. Thank so God I'm for exciting. that. <laughs> you only have to... <laughs> Conrad's like slumped over. I think you've done very, very well, Conrad. Oh, I applaud you. There's no possible way I can drink more than one mega can and do this. I mean, it's one and a half now. No, I, I literally, I can't. So hats off to you. Um, Thank you. I... Yeah, have a good week, everybody. It'll be written um, on my tombstone. He can ring, he can drink one and a half. <laughs> he can ma- ring, <laughs> crossed out, chiseled off. He can drink. One and a half mega cans. Yeah. Almost um, without any <laughs> <laughs> side effects. Almost without like any, any side effects. Okay, well okay. done. Goodbye, everybody. Stay safe. Bye. Keep the, keep the rules. I don't know why I'm talking nonsense. I don't have any excuse. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.